Hello from Wales, the home of the Lumen Prize. I'm Carla Rappaport, founder and executive director of Lumen Art Projects. Next to me is our director, Jack Addis. Thank you for tuning in to our ninth annual awards program, where we'll be giving out $11,000 to nine artists from around the world. 2020 hasn't been the year we expected, but we're delighted that the interest and appreciation of art created with technology continues to grow. So thank you again for celebrating this with us. Over the next hour or so, we will hear from each of the winning artists who have recorded short videos about themselves. We'll also share short clips of the winning works. To keep some of the suspense, none of the artists know which prize they've won, only that they've won an award. Announcing the winner of each award will be members of the Lumen team, our jury panel, and our partners from around the world. As this is a YouTube premiere, you'll be able to comment live during the program. You'll also find me in the comments section, so if you have any questions about the works, please let me know. We're also live on Twitter, at Lumen Prize. It now gives me great pleasure to hand over to our first presenter, Madeleine Pierpont in the US. Hi, this is Madeline Pierpont, Curatorial Assistant for Lumen Art Projects, and it gives me great pleasure to announce that the winner of the 2020 Lumen Prize Still Image Award is Liliana Farber for Tarum in Aspect 2. This work features a photographic series of phantom lands that were once thought to exist and appeared on maps for centuries. Using a machine learning algorithm trained with images from Google Earth, Tarum in Aspect 2 charts a space between the physical and the digital the real and the imagined. Farber's work poses important questions and reflects on the way we capture history, define geopolitical space, and the way we catalog knowledge. Without further delay, let's take a look at her work and then hear from Liliana herself about her practice. Hello, I am Liliana Farber. I am a Uruguayan Israeli visual artist based in New York. I speak to you from the beautiful North Atlantic coast. To be precise, at the latitude of 41 degrees, 3 minutes and 59 seconds north. But I could be anywhere, really. I could be in my hometown, Montevideo, at the shores of the River Plate, or I could be in Tel Aviv, uh, staring at the Mediterranean, or I could be lost in the deep oceans, looking at the endless blue from a fictional island. A bit about my practice, uh, in my work, I look at the protocols that construct reality to try to understand how we construct ourselves. Uh, the work that was selected for the Lumen Prize uh, is called Teram Ima Spectrum. This is a work that inquires into the conception, institutions, and legacies of knowledge. This work centers around phantom islands. They, these are bodies of land that were represented for many years in maps, but at some point were proven to have never existed. In my work, I recreate those islands as satellite photography through a machine learning algorithm trained with images from Google Earth. The existence of these islands in the collective consciousness was product of colonial projects, uh, mythologies, and scientific errors. Some of those islands are more famous, like the mythological Atlantis, and some are more modest, like Jupiter Reef, an archipelago that was taken out of map just in 2015, that is 10 years after Google Earth was launched. As posthumous monuments to mythologies, Terramim Aspecto uh, in a question, what does it mean to have a global uh, mapping system that defines what is real and what is not? about fictions and about the faith put both in ancient and modern technologies to define the world. History has proven many maps to be inaccurate, but we still hold satellite photography as truthful. The combination of a godlike view with machine-made images create the illusion of precise and neutral documentation. However, there is no such thing as a neutral data visualization. There I must speak to question the power and access of information systems and ask the question, what does it mean to have um, a global system that defines the geography of the world? 
and whom, if any institution, should be in charge of this task. I thank you all for uh, your attention and I hope you enjoy the artworks tonight. Hello, I'm Nathan Ladd. Uh, I'm an assistant creator of contemporary art at Tate and I've had the privilege to be part of the jury for this year's Lumen Prize. I'm very pleased to be here to announce the winner of the Moving Image category. Uh, it's been a great pleasure uh, to see the vast array of new talent in the Lumen Prize long and short list across all the categories but particularly in moving image. I think I speak for all the judges when I say it's been so, so great to watch all of this year's entries that have covered such a broad array of topics and ideas and opened our eyes to different ways technology can be mobilized in art. So without further ado, I'm very pleased to announce the winner of this year's Lumen Prize in moving image is Casey Rias for his work, Compressed Cinema. Casey Rios works with generative adversarial networks to move them away from what was their intended goal and instead uses them to produce uncanny, ephemeral or transitory images. In his winning series of five audiovisual works, Compressed Cinema, the effect of this method is a visually and sonically engaging video work that presents us with unique images that at once draw you in with their indication towards things that are familiar whilst at the same time disorientating you. Projected at wall scale, the eerie conceptual images and audio are meant to be experienced in the abrupt manner in which they are presented. He uses still photographs by artists such as Cindy Sherman and Stan Brackage as training data to create speculative videos that make up the work. They are visual abstractions in the tradition of artists such as Brackage, whilst also commenting on the aesthetics and sensibility of machine intelligence in creating moving image. Congratulations to Casey Rias and to all those shortlisted in the moving image category for this year's Lumen Prize. Short video, two minutes. Hello, I'm Casey Rees. I'm an artist who writes software. I'm engaged with software as a visual arts medium. I see software as the most recent form in the development of visual arts media, drawing and painting, printing, film, video, software. For the last 20 years, I've been running my own studio, writing code to create visual media including works on paper, public installations, collaborations with architects and musicians, and plenty of projected work for galleries and museums. I'm excited that you can experience the compressed cinema videos. They are a new direction in my work and they are my first collaboration with Jan St. Werner. Jan and I met about three years ago. I've been a fan of his music with Andy Toma, the collaboration Mouse on Mars, for many years, for over 20 years, but I was new to Jan's solo work. I got really excited about his new release at the time, Spectric Acid. I started listening to it in the studio and thinking about translating its energy and rhythms into images. We decided to work together on the compressed cinema videos to explore something new, something like an alchemy of image and sound. Fusing the two and how they activate our senses is what this work is about. These videos were created in the long tradition of experimental cinema and abstract animation. Most specifically, they were inspired by Tom, Tom, the Piper's son, a film by Ken Jacobs. I'm very grateful to Hey Min Cho, my studio assistant, who was the technical lead on the visual work for two years. This work wouldn't have been possible to create without her expertise. Thank you for listening.
everybody, my name is Ben Vickers. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of the Serpentine Galleries in London, as well as the co-director of Ignota Books. And I'm very sad that we're not all together this year to celebrate each of the winners of the Lumen Prize, but I am very excited that it can still happen as the Lumen Prize really feels like a critical platform that gives us the opportunity to celebrate and explore many new artists many great works and each year it's definitely a, a pleasure and, and very important for me to be exposed to these works that many of which I wouldn't necessarily encounter. Uh, this year it is my pleasure to announce the winner for the 3D Interactive Award 2020 which goes to Hertzian Landscapes by Richard Vajan from the Netherlands. Congratulations Richard for this incredibly technological sublime work. Um, I know that we all now will have the pleasure to experience some of the work. So thank you and congratulations. And hopefully we'll get to see each other next year. Hi, I'm Richard Feigen. Welcome to our studio. We're in a converted garage in Arnhem, the Netherlands, that we use as an office and space for prototyping. What you cannot see is that this space is filled with digital signals. We are literally surrounded with information. Visualizing this invisible technological dimension is the main focus of my work. With Architecture of Radio, I created an application that shows the invisible signals from satellites and cell towers that surround us. Wi-Fi tapestry, on the other hand, uses thermochromic yarns and heating elements to visualize the Wi-Fi activity in a space. As wireless devices distribute their bandwidth across different Wi-Fi channels, different parts of the tapestry change color. The work Hertzian Landscapes comes from the same curiosity to explore the invisible world around us. It portrays the radio spectrum as a landscape with hundreds of applications from military satellites to medical implants as spatial features. It is a landscape that you can both read and get lost in. I'm very happy to be part of the Newman family and I hope that you will be able to explore the work Hertzian Landscapes in a virtual exhibition. Thank you Lumen Arts for inviting us along to present this award, albeit in a virtual way. Uh, that suits us though. My name is Brian Mensman. I'm uh, the Head of Content and Insight at BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT. And we sponsored the AI Award and this is the fourth year uh, we've been very pleased to do so. Uh, so it's my pleasure to announce the winner. The winner is Helen by Christian Leclerc from Germany. So congratulations, Christian. Here's two of the comments from the judges. One of the best pure AI artworks I have seen from intention to concept to delivery. And the comment on the material used, grounding this technological project in a material like marble that is imbued with so much art historical resonance creates a compelling juxtaposition of the historic and the contemporary. So congratulations, Christian. And we're pleased to be uh, sponsoring the award that you've won today.
When we discuss art, we respect each other's opinion because we know our impressions are just highly subjective. But only until the artist steps into the room. Because now we have access to the creator and we have access to answers. Asking how and why did you create this piece? What drove you? And I think it is because we link an artwork to its artist, an object to its origin. What drives me about AI art is to question this link between an intention and the relating piece. So what if we perceive an artwork, but there will never be an artist stepping into the room? Basically no authority at all, just all of us becoming passive observers discussing forever. In order to define the form of Helen, we used a custom deep learning solution for 3D forms. This network is then trained with a data set of 120,000 individual sculptures of historical busts. Once it is trained, our network generates new alternative versions of this historical data set. I think I really enjoyed to work with marble because it adds weight to something that is normally perceived as weightless. So digital art means normally to work with data channeling through different mediums. So from image to video to code and memory and this then gets uploaded to the internet and continuously feels like an endless cycle without a, any full stop. Now using heavy stone is like freezing this stream of data into a full statement that then might persist. comes to Helen, I mean, I think I know who it is. Um, I see a very clear historical figure and I can't really unsee it. But then again, I would be lying if I would pretend that I definitely know who it is, because 
I have never really shaped my ideas or intentions into this actual form. So I became a spectator. Now I see a piece, I see a creation, but I can't see any creator around. Every day, advances in the fields of artificial intelligence, blockchain, and biotechnology are fundamentally transforming all aspects of how we live our lives. As humans, we must begin to actively relate to these changes, so we can have a wider debate about what role we want next generation technologies to play in our society. This is why, we at the Mind Future Foundation, in partnership with the Lumen Prize, are proud to announce the launch of our new Mind Future Award. We want to honor the artists who are challenging perceived dynamics between humans and next generation technologies. Artists who critically engage with questions such as What are the ethical and existential dilemmas that next generation technologies increasing entanglement in our everyday lives bring. How do advances in machine learning perpetuate hidden power dynamics within our society? What do developments in genetic engineering mean for matters of gender and identity? Who has agency and accountability in machine-assisted actions? And what role does code bias play in an algorithm's decision-making process? The award is dedicated to artistic practices that critically reflect the human, cultural, and societal significance of artificial intelligence, blockchain, or biotechnology, among others. We want to see exciting projects operating at the cross-section between art, science, and philosophy, to provoke awareness and spur debates about how the use of next generation technologies can be integrated into society, safely, ethically, and sustainably. Hi, I'm Sophie Clority, artist liaison for Lumen Art Projects and the Lumen Prize, and I'm so happy to announce the winner of the 2020 Lumen Prize XR Award, Aline Legarnison, for her work Unbalanced. Unbalanced is an experience in XR extended reality that rethinks immersive interactions, highlighting ironies in Western notions of bodily awareness and forms of bodily disengagement, such as VR. Congratulations, Eileen, and next we will see some clips of her work as well as some words from the artist herself. I'm Eileen Le Garnisson, an experienced designer from La Réunion, a small French island in the Indian Ocean. I have explored its landscapes my whole youth, and I believe these interactions strongly influence my work. This is why I thought I'd take you on a little walk out there. Growing up in such a place, the notion of embodiment, the full body as a mean for interaction, is strongly routed within me. Here rocks, soils, waters and lights are all a call for exploration. Different forms, motions and substances influence your perception, your moods and movements. Multisensory experiences are a fascinating normality. It makes you fully aware of the world, but also of your own body within it. The world most of us evolve in is quite different from this one. Spatial context and interactions tend to limit and control our movements, disengaging us from our bodies and environments. Concerned about this contrast, I often ask myself how human-machine interactions could build on the ones we have with natural environments. 
This is how working with XR became an evidence. I see it as a medium to create alternative realities as enriching as our physical world. And in the case of imbalance, a medium to train and amplify our perception and awareness of what is already out there. Good evening, my name is Trude Gomes Ugelstad and I am the Artistic Director at Sørlandets Kunstmuseum Kunstilo in Kristiansand in Norway. It is a huge pleasure for me to be able to launch the Nordic Award this year as part of the Lumen Prize for Art and Technology. We know that artists from all over the world compete for this award, which highlights various areas of digital art and no similar price exists in the Nordic countries. There is an increased interest in the field of art and technology, and Sørlandes Kunstmuseum, Kunstilo, we want to be part of this development through our own exhibitions, lectures and workshops, and of course in tight collaboration with the Lumen Art Project. This year we showed the Lumen Prize Award winners for last year, Refik Anadol and Sogwen Shen, with a huge success. We are so pleased to be able to anchor our commitment to art and technology through our collaboration with Lumen. We believe that when artist groups such as Team Lab top the statistics and institutions such as the Royal College of Art include art and technology in their curriculum, we know that there is a significant change going on. As an institution, we would like to be part of this change and uh, for the Nordic artists especially, and their audiences. So, with no further ado, I am very proud to present to you the winner of the Nordic Award 2020. A huge congratulations to Søren Krag for his work, De Milfleur, 2000 Flowers. Congratulations. The term millefleur, from French meaning literally thousand flowers, refers to a background style used in medieval and early Renaissance tapestry, consisting of many different small flowers and plants, usually shown on a darker backdrop, as though growing in grass. Weavers were obliged to repeat figure designs by members of the Painters Guild, 
but could often design the floral backgrounds themselves. In an effort to further extrapolate this reversal of the image hierarchy, figures, and narrative have been omitted altogether, focusing solely on the background. At the core of the project are computer-generated, hyper-stylized, symmetrical flowers. After establishing a number of fixed parameters 2,000 unique flowers have been generated algorithmically and digitally woven into a tapestry. It's an absolute honour to present the 2020 Lumen Prize Global South Award. I'm Melanie Lenz, a London-based institutional and freelance curator specialising in digital art. This award celebrates the incredibly rich and diverse art and technology practices of makers from countries and cultures largely underrepresented in the mainstream art and technology scene. I'd like to thank Christopher Choa, a board member of Lumen Art Projects, who generously sponsored this award. And now I have the great pleasure to announce that the Global South Award winner is Tupac Matir of Satori Studio. His work, The Cosmos Within Us, is an incredibly rich and powerful storytelling achievement that embraces experimental VR and performance. The work stood out for its distinctiveness uh, and is really outstanding, so I'd like to say congratulations, Tupac. <laughs> My name is Tupac Martyr. I am the creative director of Satori Studio. We are a uh, London-based company that came out of live entertainment. We dwell also on the architectural lighting and media facade. And we have a, a side, a, a strand of the studio that deals more with immersive and new technologies and the integration of those technologies into what we do within live entertainment. As an artist, you try to create beautiful things and you aim to do the best that you can. 
if you're happy with everything that you do then you're not really pushing yourself to the limit you've you found a nice little place to sit and deliver from you know from your own limits and i think part of delivering something good every single time is you're pushing yourself to the limit every single day cosmos within us it's a performance that happens in real time but it is driven fully by an interactor wearing a headset and driving through it on VR. What makes it very, very different to any other type of XR, VR, whatever you want to call it, is that it's actually a new genre. We've come in and massively pushed it to a new boundary. And so we've been thinking that the name that could be called is performative R, because it is a performance that happens in different realities. And at first it was just the gimmick of doing something in VR. And slowly we've actually created stories with, that people feel true empathy, you know, that there is that relationship between you and what's happening in your world. It's, it, you know, we've evolved to that point in which the story is now king, is not the technology. The evolution of this is when, when you don't know what's shot in, in, in VP, what's shot in real, and actually you don't care. Because what you're really caring about is the final story that we're trying to tell. We, yeah, we're going for the humanity within technology. The grammar scene is such a powerful anchoring moment. The smiles on people's faces when they get to those scenes. At that moment, we know we got them. It does have a lot of sadness in the piece and the, the tears that people tend to have are very real. The hope for Cosmos is that Cosmos becomes the first performative R that opens the floodgates to a whole new world of entertainment. Thank you very much to Lumen for this award. Hello, I'm Christiana Monarchi. I'm the founding editor of Photo Monitor online magazine, and I'm the proud sponsor of the Lumen Student Award for the second time. I wanted to say many congratulations to all of the shortlisted artists. You've really made some powerful works this year and ones that have made me think and feel, not just be awed by the technology. And that's a really strong combination. So many congratulations to all of you. There can only be one winner, which is very difficult, for which we thank Nathan Ladd at Tate for having made the selection of the winner. And Nathan has selected the winner of the Lumen Student Award this year is Wa Liu with Racing Thoughts. Many congratulations. May I read a few words that Nathan has passed on as to his choice. I was very impressed with her use of a two channel video work to simultaneously explore a clinical and humanistic approach to human emotions stimulated by scrolling through a series of stimuli internet pages. The integration of computer imagery with hand-drawn animations was visually compelling. It was a carefully crafted and well-executed moving image work that distilled complex scientific and programmatic ideas into a visually engaging work. Nathan would also like to pass on his honorable mention to the ambitious project Kang Jie, by Wei Di Zhang and Dong Hao Ren. Thank you very much, many congratulations, and thank you to the Lumen Prize for supporting art and technology. Good night. I'm Liu Hua, an artist who works in installation, moving image, and painting. I deploy neurotechnology to construct immersive and interactive environments, exploring the subjectivity and plasticity of human emotions and perceptions. I draw inspirations from post-humanism, seeking to reimagine human agency at a time when feelings and desires could be quantified, predicted, and affected by neuroscience. My two-channel video work, Racing Thoughts, interrogates the power dynamics between humanity and technology by juxtaposing both clinical and humanistic approaches to my emotions during a discursive internet surfing.
On the right channel, a brain wave headset objectively monitors my real-time emotional changes. On the left channel, my hand-drawn animations illustrate my subjective thoughts and imagination with a human touch. As I scroll through the endless web pages, the internet also brings unexpected discoveries back into the real world, which range from data privacy to mental health issues, from air pollution in China to its nuclear history during the Cold War. In the end, this virtual journey on the internet leads to my on-site field research at China's first military nuclear base, 404. Hello, everyone. I am Refik Anadol. I am a media artist and last year's Lumen Prize winner, Gold Award winner, with my work Melting Memories. I am connecting with you from Los Angeles, California, where me and my team is working together last six years. And as a media artist, I've been working with data. Last almost 10 years, and working with machine learning algorithms, specifically AI, last four years. After winning the award, I was able to work on an exciting exhibition in collaboration with Lumen Award team, and in Sorland, that's Norway. Melting memories have been exhibited for almost five months, and during these five months, like especially during the COVID time. It was wonderful people sharing their feelings, ideas, their inner worlds through the lens of media arts. As media artists, many of us who is who are like trying to push the boundaries of imagination, boundaries of technology, trying to create meaningful experiences and narratives, and created trying to create new discourse and context in our works. We always find sometimes ourselves very lonely. Sometimes we find ourselves alone in the landscapes of vast imagination. And I think this kind of award, that typically, at least personally, from my humble opinion, really enhance our trust, ambition, and motivation to the work we are doing. From the very beginning of my journey. I personally challenge myself that art should be for anyone, any age, and any background, and any culture. And this is a very heavy lifting, and it's a very heavy lifting, and it comes with many, many problems and many unknowns. But Melting Memories for me was one of those projects that was designed for the experience of a human celebrates the moment of remembering. And from that perspective, I'm deeply grateful for the Lumen Prize Award. Now, I am very excited to announce this year's Gold Award winner. She is Julieta Gil of Mexico City with her work Nuestra Victoria. Congratulations, Julieta! I'm deeply honored to share this award with you. That I feel like we have been connected through our education. We both of us in the same studio for a, more than a year, while both of us working at University of California, Los Angeles, at Design Media Arts Department. I am deeply honored to share this journey with you as well, and congratulations for your beautiful work, your deep discourse, and meaningful context. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Julieta, and I'm a visual artist based in Mexico City. My creative research incorporates three-dimensional form, whether it's creating installation, sculpture, 3D renderings, and animation. I work with computers as a way to reflect on how we are altered by the digitization of our existence. I'm interested in the overlaps that occur in the interaction between physical and digital realities, and through my work, I create narratives that reflect upon institutional pasts. Presence and futures. I'm currently interested in themes like feminism, subversive technologies, fiction, and memory, and how these can be used to re-signify, re-imagine, and reshape our understanding of institutions and monuments, to be more precise. The project Nuestra Victoria, Our Victory, is a series of works about a prominent Mexico City monument. 
During the summer of 2019, hours after serving as a site of protests focused on violence against women, the monument was boarded up. The government soon began working on its restoration, erasing the voices of protests that it carried. This project allows the words and actions of civil resistance to be maintained in our collective memory. Please join us in congratulating our nine incredible Lumen Prize Award winners, who will receive a total of $11,500 in prize money. Our winners, along with our long list and our short list, are now a part of our Lumen community, which makes them eligible for events, commissions, and exhibitions with our partners globally through our parent company, Lumen Art Projects. If you're interested in partnering with Lumen, please send us an email at info at lumenprize.com or send us a message on Twitter or Instagram. Next, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank our first round judges, our International Selectors Committee, and our jury panel. Our jury panel is as follows. Nathan Ladd, Assistant Curator at the Tate Britain in London. Christiane Paul, Abjunct Curator of Digital Art at the Whitney Museum in New York. Ben Vickers, CTO of Serpentine Galleries in London, Melanie Lenz, Digital Art Curator for the V&A in London, and Fotini Aravani, Digital Curator at the Museum of London. We'd also like to thank our award sponsors. Chris Choa, Executive Director Alchemist for supporting our first Global South Award, Torel Hagen and Trude Gomnas Ugolstad at SMKU in Norway for helping launch our Nordic Award, Christian Monarchy of Photo Monitor for supporting our student award, and the BCS Chartered Institute of IT for backing our AI award. And now please mark your calendars for the 2020 Lumen Winners Exhibition. You'll have a chance to enjoy these nine artworks in a new virtual exhibition being created in partnership with Leonardo, the International Society for Arts, Sciences, and Technology based in the U.S. This experience is being built on New Art City with virtual environments being co-created by DC Spensley and Gustavo Rincon. Our curatorial team is Lumen's Jack Addis and Leonardo's Danielle Simbienda. We are so excited that you'll be able to experience this 3D virtual environment, which will present the winners of the 2020 Lumen Prize. Providing historical and cultural context through Leonardo's archive of publications, Visitors will have the opportunity to interact, engage, and dive deeper into the meaning of these exceptional digital artworks. Please keep an eye out on our social media to learn more about this exciting event. And lastly, our next call for entries will open on February 15th, 2021, which will be part of our 10th anniversary year. See you then!